Hey, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Robin. I'm one of the co-founders of the Whole Food Muscle Club. And usually I come on here on weekends and I cook with you. But this weekend, because the CDC has recently said we should be wearing face masks, and because I loaned my sewing machine to a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago, and I, so I don't have a sewing machine to be able to make myself and Russ masks, um, I did some research and figured out how to make a mask without an elastic and without a sewing machine. Um, so I did play with it a little bit. I didn't make this. So this is one I made the other day. Um, I, let me see if I can show it to you. It has a little part at the top for your nose. Let's go up there like that. And I'll show you how to do that. And then this is just made out of a t-shirt, but it has extra layers in it. So this is by no means a mask that is, um, going to be for someone who's working in the medical field. This is a at home, better than nothing option. So here's what you're gonna need. And I'll, I'll put it on at the end so you can see um, what it looks like. You're gonna need an, a t-shirt that you're willing to sacrifice for the cause. Um, I feel like the, the t-shirts, the, they have to be 100% cotton, 100% cotton is gonna be your best bet. Um, and the ones that you get like as giveaways when you go to events or do things or whatever, they seem to be the best because, you know, 100% cotton t-shirts are cheap and that's what they usually give away. Um, the bigger your t-shirt is, the longer the strings are going to be that go around your head. Um, the smaller it is, the shorter it's going to be. But I, um, except for a child's t-shirt, I think you'd probably be fine. Um, so you're going to need a t-shirt. And I got three out of the, of the last t-shirt I used. I was able to make three masks out of it. So I'll show you that. So you're going to need a scissors. Now my good fabric scissors is with my sewing kit, which my friend has. So I am using just a yucky kitchen scissors. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to cut clean, but it will cut the fabric. So that's what I'm going to use, just a regular kitchen scissors. You're going to want something probably like a pen to mark the fabric with. You'll just, and you don't need a lot, like you just need a dot. So a pen. And then ideally, you're going to want something that uh, a metal strip. So I have some metal from um, because I make bows at Christmas time. Hey, Wendy, um, I make bows at Christmas time. So I have a little bit of like metal and you can buy these at um, hardware stores. It comes in a package like this. So hardware stores may have this if you want to go and get metal um, like a metal wire. You can do that. Um, if you don't have that, if you have coffee, um, coffees have, they often have these little metal things that you, you know, roll the bag down and then turn them over to hold the coffee closed. You can pull that off. That's going to be um, a really good metal strip for you to be able to use. So pull, if you have a coffee bag like that or another kind of bag that has one of these strips on it, pull that off. That's going to be a great option. Um, last resort, um, something you could use, and I have a whole bag of them. My mother always kept them, so I keep them. These are um, bread bag ties. So, and you're gonna have to use probably several of them because they're not super strong. So to give you kind of what you need to bend the fabric, you're gonna need more than one, but um, you can definitely double them up, triple them up, quadruple them up or whatever um, to put in there. So you're gonna need that. Now, ideally, needle and thread. Um, is, you're, is gonna make the best option. But if you don't have that, then you can use uh, tape will work for what I'm gonna show you. Um, it, it, will, it will make it less washable because you can't really wash tape. But um, ideally, if you have needle and thread, that's gonna be um, your best option, but you don't have to have it. So, and I'll show you some really basic um, stitches for needle and thread that you can use uh, to, to make this because I know a lot of people don't have uh, a lot of sewing skills so I will show you some basic stitches. I did paint my nails a bright color so I'm hopeful that they're going to show up better against the fabric um, as I'm doing this so you'll be able to see kind of what I'm doing more easily. So all right you're going to get your t-shirt and you're going to you know wash it lay it out and then now you got to figure out what size does your mask need to be. So if you take your hand and you put it over you know, if I do this you're going to be able to hear me but put it over your face you can tell under your chin with your finger and then the top you know, above your nose, basically the size of your hand when it's just kind of cupped like that is going to be the right size for your mask. So you're going to take that and kind of set it. You don't want to stretch your hand out. That's going to be too big. But just kind of set your hand comfortably with your finger, your pinky finger against the bottom and your um, thumb up here at the top. And that's going to give you kind of a good idea about you know, what size. And it doesn't have to be exact. 
just close. So put a little mark there, and then on this other side, do the same. And then, again, if you want to get fancy and like put a line and make, get out your ruler, it, like you can, but you don't have to. So let's see if this scissors is gonna, oh good, it's gonna work. That makes me happy. So you cut the bottom off your t-shirt. Now I did see videos when they were doing this where they actually cut the strip off the bottom. But what I found when I did this before, that strip actually works really well as a tie. So I would leave it on there. All right, and then you can do you know another one and another one um, to get more out of one t-shirt. And for children, you can, you can make them like two out of one bottom piece because they obviously their heads are smaller than adults are. I gotta pay attention to comments here. Brenda, hey, oh, you're welcome. Wendy, oh, I'm excited to see how, how this goes together. Good, I'm, I'm hopeful that you guys are gonna be able to do this. Um, I did have to play with it some to make it work. So, all right, now we have our piece and you can tell if I hold it up to my mouth, my face, it's gonna cover my nose and it's gonna curl under my chin. Oh, curl under my chin like that. All right, so now we have to figure out how much do we need to cover our face. And basically, your hands, two hands, cover from ear to ear pretty comfortably. So that's, that's pretty easy. So because the fabric is doubled, right, we have the front and the back of the t-shirt, double fabric, you just need one hand width um, here. So put your, your little finger um, against the edge of the, this, and this is where their fabric, you see your fabric's folded right there. So put it there, like that. And then wherever your thumb comes to, just put a little mark like that. All right, you guys with me? Okay, now what we have to do is we have to cut this so we end up with some ties that we can use. So turn the fabric away from you. Again, this is the part I measured, so this top part that's near you guys, that's the part that's gonna go over my face. And then this part is gonna turn into, into the ties to tie around my head. So, um, this, this particular one has the edge of the t-shirt, so that's a good marker, just kind of run along the edge of the t-shirt. Then up here at the top, make it about however much your thumb is. So that's gonna be about an inch, inch and a half or so, but um, make it wider than narrower because I have one that I made, it's actually this one, and it's a little narrow, and when I go to tie it, I'm afraid it's gonna tear. So um, make sure you make it a little wider than narrow, and you're just gonna cut it up to this mark that we made and then across. So I'm gonna make this a little wider and I'm just gonna cut it like this. Okay. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same on this side. Again, this one has the bottom of the t-shirt which makes for a really good tie. And then we'll just turn it and we'll cut it across about at that mark that we made. Oh, it didn't cut quite straight. All right. So now you've got this middle piece that you took out and you have this like this. Okay. So to get your ties, you need to cut these loose from each other. So this bottom of this t-shirt here, you have to cut it loose. So just whack it off the bottom doesn't have to be perfect. All right, now open it up. And you're gonna want, if you're using the bottom of the t-shirt, you want the bottom piece with the, um, with the hem facing downward and the middle part facing upward, so away from you. Now this part, this becomes your filler. So, um, you know, a t-shirt by itself like this, very thin, not gonna give you a whole lot of protection, but if you take this middle part that you cut out and you just, you fold it, then you can fold it in thirds or fold it in quarters. It depends upon the kind of the size of your face. And when you go to wear it, you put that so that this part goes, I know you can't hear me if I cover my mouth, right? It goes like this over your mouth and your nose and it gives you extra layers. Um, because that, that's how the virus is gonna get caught is that it's, you know, all these different fibers, all these different layers are gonna give you more protection. Now I will tell you, the more fabric that you put in the middle, the harder it is to breathe. Like you have to have strong lungs to pull the air uh, through a lot of fabric. So if you um, are someone who is um, immunocompromised 
or you have you know COPD or you have lung issues the heavy fabric is going to be harder obviously safer but harder to breathe through so um, consider that as you go all right so that's your that's your filler layer and I'll show you that um, in a minute so now you could wear this just like this um, you could you know put the filler in it and put it on and I have lip balm on it. it's gonna get all over the inside let me wipe my lip balm off all right so you could just tie it on like this you know with the filler obviously in there and you tie it around the back like that and then you take this and you tuck it under your chin and tie it up over your head and it works but the problem is you've got gaps here right so that's what we're gonna uh, take it back off that's what we're gonna do with the wire so if you don't have wire if you don't have you know a coffee thing or you don't have wire or you don't have one of these then wear it like this tie it tight use your your filler to tuck up in there to, to try and fill the gap and I just realized I didn't get my clippers, so let me grab my, uh, my clippers for this. Hold on one second. All right. My side clippers. All right. So now we have our masks, and I'm going to go ahead and use the wire because I have it. You know what? I, this one's thicker. I'm going to try this one. I used this last time, and it worked fine, but this wire is a little thicker. Another one you might be able to use for wire, if in your um, holiday decoration stuff you have any of those ribbons that have the wire edges, you could probably like cut the wires out of them and double or triple it up and that would work as well. So you're going to need probably about three or four inches of wire. So um, you know whatever you have, you know your, your bread wrappers, your coffee thing, wire you have, you go to the hardware store, get some wire, your wire out of your uh, Christmas ribbons or your holiday ribbons, whatever you have. So we'll cut a piece of this off. Where did it go? I don't know where it went. It ran off. Well, that's funny. All right. I'm not going to go in search of it right now. Let me try that again. There we go. All right. That was hysterical. So you can have this piece of wire and the point of this wire is it's going to go over your nose and you're going to be able to smooth it out so like that now so put it basically in the center of your mask that you made here and you're just going to roll the fabric over it and it takes a little bit of effort to get it started especially if you're using your thread and stuff but just roll it over and hold it in place if you're not using thread and you're going to tape it down just make sure that you get it rolled in there as well as you can and then tape it tape it in place so now let me show you um, some really easy stitches that you can do because i know that sewing is not something that everybody does every day so you're gonna just roll the fabric so it covers your your the end and then, so this is a double piece of thread where I have, I run the thread through the needle and then I have it doubled up and there's a little knot at the bottom. That's the, so that's how this started. And then you're going to roll it over. And then you just, at the very edge, and it's going to take a little bit of work, be patient with yourself with it, but run the needle through and then run the needle through again. But before let me see if I can show it to you. Before you pull it, can you, I don't know if you can see this, but before you pull it all the way down, if this is the loop from pulling it through, you're going to want to put your, your needle back through it and do like that. And that's going to give you a really nice knot at the end of it. So, and that's, that's going to be your place to start. And now from there, you can do just what's a regular whip stitch, which is just go around and around and around. That works perfectly fine. Um, and I did that with the first one that I made. I just went around and around. Um, but then what I did with the next one, because I wanted it to be a little more secure, is I would split the thread because the thread, like I said, I have two pieces here because it's doubled up. So I would dig, I would put through and then I would, oh, my little thing came out, put it back in there. So you would go through and then Put your thread between the two pieces of thread and that's going to give you more of a cross a cross stitch stitch that's going to hold that piece of metal or your 
tab or whatever you're using in place a little better. And then, so once you get that done, and it, it doesn't take very long, once you get the hang of it, um, it doesn't take very long to kind of whip that in place, then you're gonna end up with, what th it's gonna be straight because you're not, not have the nose piece yet, but, so you'll just set, and then it's, this is washable, this, the, the filler, you can just throw directly in your wash machine. This piece, I would tell you to hand wash because your metal piece that's in there is not gonna be um, super, it's like it's not gonna deal well with the agitator in your wash machine, it may tear it out, so you don't wanna do that. But I'm gonna put this without the filler in it because if I put the filler, you won't be able to hear me. But the way that it works is you just set the metal piece over your nose and then you take the top strips and tie them around your head like this. You put it in a bow or however you want to tie it. And then the bottom, don't tie it just back like that. I mean, you could, but that's going to leave gaps. Instead, pull it up over your forehead, I mean, over your head like this and tie it at the top. And that's going to give you a mask that's uh, DYI and no elastic needed because you can just tie it off. So if this was helpful, oh, I can't get it off now. Ah, there we go. If this was helpful for you, please do share. I know there's a lot of people out there who are making masks, um, you know, for our, our medical professionals. And, but then those of us who are at home, maybe we don't have access to a sewing machine. So um, this is one way that you can make one uh, for yourself. If you have to leave your home, um, which I don't recommend unless you absolutely must, but if you have to leave your home, since the CDC is recommending we wear masks, this is one option if you don't have access uh, to a sewing machine or elastic or anything like that. So yeah, if this was helpful, please do share. Thanks so much for being here. And I'm gonna say this anyway, even though it doesn't make sense on this video, eat real food, mostly plants. And if you wanna see my other cooking videos, you can go to wholefoodmuscle.com. Thanks, have a great weekend. Stay safe, everybody.